Highgate Cemetery sits on a hill in a leafy suburb of North London. Entering it feels like you are stepping foot in the Victorian age. The Gothic grandeur seems to be everywhere. Highgate Cemetery is famous as the final resting place of political philosopher Karl Marx. When Marx died in 1883, just a handful of people attended his funeral. Now thousands of people visit his memorial every year. Marx lived in London. It's where he wrote Das Kapital. Today there's a library dedicated to his memory. He was a man who walked among Londoners, a true citizen of the world. So it was that inspiration that caused the library to be created. And it was created in 1933 also because that was the year of the Nazi book burnings. So these walls became a safe haven. And today it flourishes. It serves academics, researchers, teachers and writers from all around the world. There have been many attempts to destroy Marx's memorial at Highgate. When the bomb went off underneath it, quite appropriately it tilted to the left. You can still see the scars, the battle honours that the bronze wears on its nose. Many other political thinkers, writers and artists are buried at Highgate, like painter Lucian Freud and Victorian novelist George Eliot. Six years ago, a Russian defector was buried here. His name was Alexander Litvinenko, and he was murdered. He was highly radioactive because he'd been slipped a radioactive substance. So when he was buried, he was buried 12 feet deep and in a lead-lined coffin. The west side of the cemetery is the oldest part. It opened in 1839. With its decaying tombstones and ivy-covered vaults, you can see why it was the setting for a classic Hammer horror film about Dracula. The Victorian fascination with ancient Egypt is clear to see here at the Egyptian Avenue where the richest families were buried. At the end is the Lebanon Circle, named after the cedar tree which sits atop the graves. This part of the cemetery is so fragile now, it can be seen only on a special tour. This is the mausoleum of Julius Beer, and it's all about the death of a little girl called Ada, who was eight. Her father was very, very distraught, and it is the most expensive piece of real estate in the entire cemetery. If you look at the ceiling as we go inside, you know, there's gold leaf, there's heavy precious stones. That's where your three million pounds will go. This imposing mausoleum is at the highest point of the cemetery. It's one of the many buildings that are protected because of their national importance. Highgate is quite unique. Buckingham Palace is grade two listed, Highgate is grade one. That means it's the most important architectural site of its kind. Away from the most extravagant Victorian tombs are the graves of a very well-known English family. Lucinda Hawksley is the great-great-great-granddaughter of writer Charles Dickens. Her relatives are forever immortalized in his novels. Some of the characters in Charles Dickens' work are actually inspired by people who are buried here at Highgate. Most famously, his father, John Dickens, was the inspiration in David Copperfield for Mr. Micawber. In Victorian times, Highgate Cemetery wasn't just a place for the wealthy or upper classes. This is the grave of working-class hero Tom Sayers, one of the most famous men of his day. In those days, you see, there was no sport for the ordinary person. Football hadn't been invented. So the working class loved this bare-knuckle fighting, and this guy was the great champion because he beat everybody uh, and he became a hero. Forget uh, Karl Marx, six people. I mean, 10,000 people turned out here at his funeral. The sanctuary and peace of Highgate Cemetery allows one to reflect on the history that is written upon the many graves and tombs here and offers an insight into London's past. <laughs>